One thing that's a truism, something we've discussed in various ways on the Right Next Door podcast, is just because you're a neighbor doesn't mean you're a friend. Doesn't mean you're a friend, and it doesn't mean you're neighborly, for that's sure. That's right. That's right. And uh, we have stories. That's part, pretty much our stock and trade. Stories of neighbors who are not very neighborly, and um, they're right next door, and they are uh, not the people you want to deal with in any way. Yeah. I the, have some stories about that. We have several stories that uh, covers a gamut of topics from, you know, HOA, people misbehaving and behaving poorly with their homeowners association group, uh, you know, neighbors dispute uh, uh, over property lines and, and that sort of stuff. But uh, have you ever had a bad neighbor? Have you ever encountered? I a- have not had a bad neighbor in a long time. I've been very lucky. And when I lived in a house in a nearby suburb, we had a neighbor that was quirky. They were odd, but they were agreeable and we could communicate with them. I think it's a lot about communication. So it's not not very useful for our purposes on the podcast today. But no, I really don't have many bad neighbor stories. Well, I I have one. uh, Look, I've been, I guess, lucky that I've only had one bad neighbor. And it was with the, the first house we ever purchased. And the guy next door had been in the neighborhood for, you know, since the beginning of time. Huh. And uh, so we moved into this house, needed a lot of work. It was a fixer upper because it's our first house and that's all we could afford. And there was a, a tree in, right in the center of the backyard, which yeah. clearly in the center had of your backyard, in the center of, of your backyard, of my backyard. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, um, if memory serves, it was a Japanese maple, huh. but it was, it was you know, it had some sort of a disease. It didn't, it didn't oh. look well <laughs> it, yeah. it, it hadn't been attended to in years. And so I, I called an arborist and I said, you know, can we spray this thing or, you know, can you, can you make it better? And yeah. Trees are like, uh, are like pets. A lot of times you, you just need, they need care. They need love. They need attention. They need surgery from the, the arborist. Right. So the arborist, uh, looks at it. And he's like, too far gone. You're going to have to cut it down and plant something wow, new. It's, wait, wow. There's no way to save it. I so, cannot tell a lie. You must cut this tree down. You, you got to get rid of it. So I'm like, okay, well, we'll just get rid of it and I'll plant something else. So long story short, we cut down the tree and my neighbor, the crotchety old guy next door, freaks out. Now, oh. this is this is way off of his property. line. It's in the, like dead center in the middle of my yard. And he was upset because his kitchen window looked out over my yard. And I guess for the last 50 years or whatever, he'd been looking at this tree. So I tried to explain to him. I said, look, arborist came. I just didn't do this willy nilly. Yeah. You know, uh, you're not a you're not a middle of the night (laughs) rampaging tree cutter downer. Right. I'm not Mr. T that buys the property and cuts down all his trees. Cuts down a forest. Yeah. Uh, You know, I I actually went the extra mile to try and save it because I'm. That's a bad neighbor. Mr. T. Man, can you imagine? You get this wealthy guy, this celebrity that comes in and just decimates the property, just wipes out all the uh, foliage. And uh, what do you do? I pity the fool. I pity, I pity the, the fool. fool has to deal with well, that. And I think his excuse was that it was bad for his allergies. So, like, well, maybe you wanted to oh. buy a different house. Yeah. You know, don't, yeah. don't buy your a house, dog. Right. Don't surround your house. Don't buy a house surrounded by trees if you got bad allergies. Yeah, so, I, I, um, I hate city life, but I, you know, I, I have a place in the city. What, what, yeah, what the hell, you know? Yeah. Well, so anyway, cutting down this tree was the beginning of a crazy, oh, no, back and forth. So there was no had a big open yard. Yeah. And this is before we had dogs. I mean, I had a dog prior to getting married, but but we didn't have one at this time. And so the, it was a big open, you know, yard to yard, a neighborhood with no alleys, by the way. Oh, and um, so he we have some party coming up. I think it was like a uh, I don't know. It was it was some big family barbecue party or something. And you know oh, what no. this Jim Oak does? Oh, no. He turns on his garden hose and puts it right on the property line to flood out my my oh. my yard. I was so incensed over this that I put up what I called the Berlin wall. And so where there was no fence, I bought the tallest fence that met ordinance, wow. put up the Berlin wall. So I wouldn't have to deal with this guy. 
And then it just, it was, you know, one thing after the next. And finally, he just ended up moving because oh, I wasn't going anywhere. Oh, um, and he was probably That's really. There. So it was terrible. Tough. But it's, you I know. Thought, I, I thought there'd be a happy ending that the guy would expire because he's, you know, no, the older people. No, he didn't. <laughs> he, he didn't. He didn't. He, he didn't die. He moved to a condo. Oh, uh, okay. But but it was just one of those things where it causes so much tension and angst a- and angst and stuff where I, you know, on I, a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you have this constant drone in your head of this this annoying neighbor that's really tough. yeah so i f- i feel for the people that have bad neighbors but today's episode we're going to be dealing with a some bunch of the worst of, so, some of the craziest things i mean uh, flooding out your yard is one thing but some of the stuff I, we got coming up uh will, will i think amaze you dirty deeds triggered tirades busybodies, and missing cats they say tall fences make good neighbors but bad neighbors make the Right Next Door podcast. So, Darren, I have found this week a bunch of stories and photographic evidence of neighbors behaving badly. And so there's actual evidence. This isn't a story you heard. It wasn't, hey, I heard about this guy. This is real evidence, including photographs of terrible, terrible neighbor behavior right and i think uh, one that i think a lot of people can identify with is if you've got foliage yeah that's not on you know that's on your property but not your foliage so uh i've known so maybe like a like a tree like it like a tree so there's trees jeff correct me if i'm wrong on this and you know i'm not i'm not really down with all the science but once a tree is uh in place that tree is going to uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Grow. Grow. It's going to get bigger and it's going to spread. And it might spread in such a way that it could they could encroach on a property line where it did not encroach before. Right. Yeah. And I think that happens quite often. I mean, I, I have yes. I have one photograph of a guy that yeah. obviously he's not getting along with this neighbor because yeah. he literally the the tree is right on the property line and he literally cut the tree in half. <laughs> Oh, and there's like half of a tree. <laughs> yeah, you showed me this picture. So the tree is the tree is like a kind of a lollipop tree. So like the top of the tree used to be this big green ball, and now imagine a a lollipop, and it's sheared neatly in half. So it's like a half of a lollipop. Right. It, it's so obviously a cranky neighbor issue. It just, and it just, it looks ridiculous. Yeah. It looks complete. It's, it's, it's worse when the, it's, it's worse than some of the things I've seen when the power company comes in and trims trees around the power lines. I mean, it's just, it's that off the charts, crazy. And the thing about these property lines, property lines go back in human history. You know, your, your property line could have been established in, in, 1940 or 1930 or 1915 or 1874 you know i mean you you knew there was a property line there you knew things grow what the hell I yeah mean, honestly I, you know i i think that only happens if you're already having an issue with the neighbors you know because most of the time if a tree grows over i mean unless it's like i don't know over your swimming pool and it's dropping leaves and stuff into your pool or there's some extenuating circumstance who doesn't like a tree you know um, but, but, uh, I, I do have a, a, a pal that, uh, bought a place, uh, on the West coast and, uh, yeah. somebody let these bamboo, uh, trees grow to some crazy, insane height. So bamboo, bamboo is incredibly fast growing. So I wonder what kind of height they got to, uh, somewhere above 25 feet tall. Wow. And so wow. his whole, wow. he had a pool in the yard and he wasn't yeah. getting any sun. So he, <laughs> calls up the village or the city, whatever. And he's like, you know, is there an ordinance on how high you can let bamboo grow? And they're like, yeah, it's, you know, 10 feet, 12 feet, whatever the heck it was. So I guess to trim down all his bamboo. Oh, and, and he might not have been happy about that. No, he was not happy about it because that, that guy calls the city and says, what's, what's the maximum height of a fence. And then like oh. my, my buddy's fence was like, four inches too high <laughs> so they, and then it goes back and forth yeah, like it, uh, it, how heavy can your car be how aggressive can your dog be uh how how ugly can your child be you know i mean then it just it just escalates and you're in a continuing war of attrition yeah and i think it's even worse if you're in 
some sort of a townhouse or a condo or, or a gated no. community where you got the HOA. I mean, people are, I mean, HOA, it's been the, how, homeowners admit uh, association. Homeowners association. Yeah. So you pay a fee every month to the homeowners yeah. association. They take care of the green space and the shoveling, lawn mowing, roofs, that kind of stuff. There's a friend of mine who might hear this podcast sometime who actually was a president of his condo board and he was a benevolent ruler and he was a well-liked, hardworking guy. Uh, but that's that's the exception that, that proves the rule or whatever that phrase is because typically these condo board people are just the the most annoying, ruthless, evil folks. Like, you know, they're, they're the people that say, um, Mr. Um, Mr. Jones, uh, we've had uh, a complaint about the fact that someone was, someone had put out a cigarette on the sidewalk several feet from your front door, and the cigarette smoke uh, bothered their, the asthma, their dog has asthma. And so when they carried the cigarette smoke in on their clothes, their asthmatic dog had an attack and uh, and coughed for like a, it was a reported nine minutes. And so um, we're going to, you're going to need to fine you fifteen hundred dollars because uh, that that the vet bill for that asthmatic dog, uh, you know, the homeowners association cannot absorb that cost, Mister Jones. And so I mean, it goes it goes that nuts sometimes. Yeah, really it, it it well, and then but then like the pendulum, I'm sure swings both ways. You've probably got yeah. lunatics living in these places that do all kinds of crazy stuff. And so there has to be some check on the lunatics as well. Right. There's got to be a check and balance. So like like everything in society today, there's there's nobody in the middle anymore. It's no, oh everybody's no, on no. the extreme side of something. Everybody is trimming the tree, cutting the tree in half instead of just saying, "Hey, how about I I trim the tree just a little bit?" Right. And and then and then maybe there's a, you have a neighbor that has a a dog that gets a little aggressive, and that dog. The dog actually was so aggressive that there was a dog bite incident and you felt bad about it. You felt bad about it. And so, yeah, you're going to pay a fine. You're going to pay a fine because you, you owe that person for their, their vet, their hospital bill for having a small dog bite. And so, um, uh, so that person is going to pay the, uh, fine for the dog bite. Right. And I, I actually listened to a podcast. I don't remember which, which one, but, uh, the, the whole podcast revolved around um, some young kid uh, was was renting a condo from his dad. Yeah. And he'd have parties until, you know, all hours of the night, which was disturbing the neighbors. And the, 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 the HOA condo board, uh, you know, had had the opposite. They had no teeth at all. They couldn't get the, couldn't oh, get the guy man. to stop. So there was some lawsuit over it. Or, I mean, so it just shows you how fast things can spiral out of, out of hand. But well, um, it goes crazy. It does go crazy. And this person uh, that I'm talking about, they wanted to pay the fine for this dog bite. They wanted to pay the guy for his uh, medical bill, but they didn't want to show that they were happy about having to pay it. So uh, we see here there's a, a wheelbarrow filled with pennies. So, oh, um, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to, I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay for your medical bill, but you know, I love my dog more than I love you. So here's how I'm going to pay you. You're going to get uh, 17,000 uh, pennies and you can you can put them in little penny rolls and, and t cart them to the bank yourself because uh, little Fido, he didn't mean to bite you even though he did cause damage. Yeah, I, I don't get it. If your dog, you know, incurred uh you know, if, if if your pet gets injured by somebody else's dog you should just pay the yeah. vet bill I, i'm sorry uh let me cover the cost but nobody you know nobody does the right thing anymore now it's you know it's got to be a lawsuit and every other thing i love this one uh there's a picture here so you know those those things those uh vents or those fans what is it what are they called oh, yeah like the on attic the top uh, of your house yeah like it's an <laughs> attic uh those turbines on your attic yeah. that spin around in the wind well, uh, there was a neighbor who had a problem with a turbine because I guess it had a bit of a squeak. So it went around. So they'd be, they had their, maybe their, their bedroom window open and they heard squeak, 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 squeak of that attic turbine. And the neighbor said, you know, I'm not happy with that. And I'm going to find some way to deal with that. And so we have here a picture of an attic turbine with an arrow shot, he, shot directly into it. He shot with an arrow, which uh, he had to be on his roof to be able to even get, because oh, yeah. it's, it's it's exactly 
you know, dead center to this turbine. So he had to be on his roof shooting arrows. And he had to be a pretty, it had to be a pretty darn, you know, one of those compound bows that can shoot an arrow like 75 football fields or something because it pierced this metal turbine. And, uh, well, problem solved. Problem, problem solved, solved, man. If you live next, to the gre- next, live next door to the Green Lantern, you're not going to have a, a problem with the squeaky right. turbine for very long. I, th- I think my favorite, though, was the, the picture of the, the townhouse steps. Yeah, where oh, it's so, like a duplex. It's like a, a duplex, and and the Jamoke they share a stairway, and the Jamoke shovels his half of the stairway, and then leaves the snow in place for his neighbor. So a perfect, perfect, smooth, uncovered par- part of one half of the stairway, and then exactly the snow. The snow is exactly filling the other half of the stairway, and that just says, you know, you are. Uh, I, I just don't I just don't care about you. And so one one neighbor is also what if there was like what if the neighbor was elderly or what if I think it's just a it's an anger issue. Here, it's an clearly. yeah because yeah I was thinking the same thing. How do you know the people next door might have been elderly couldn't shovel? I mean there are also times where like shoveling is a whole nother thing where um, you know if it's snowing a lot I'm not the guy that's out there shoveling five times. I wait till yeah, the storm yeah. to pass and then I shovel. Yeah. And then, like, people get upset with that because they're like, well, you got to shovel your walk. I'm like, I am shoveling my walk when I'm the sho- storm's what over. What do I need to? I need to stay home from work to shovel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, some people just get crazy over everything, you know. But, but uh, you know, if you lived next door to a person and you shared a stairway, yeah, wouldn't yeah. you just be a nice guy or gal? And, and I mean, maybe they never reciprocate. And so they're like, okay, fine. I'm sick of doing this. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no uh, Mikasa Sukasa. Uh, so I I'm live just in a doing place, mine. To hell with you. I I live in a place with snow, and it's the nicest thing when the snow. The guy with the snowblower, because let's face it, you bought a snowblower, you're kind of enjoying your snowblower. You're kind of having fun using it, you know. Yeah. And so he he does his snowblower along the entire sidewalk for like three or four buildings. That's a great guy. Yeah. That's a great guy. We had a neighbor that had a, like one of those tractor things. Oh yeah. And I have a snowblower and he would still do my, you know, my walks and stuff. And I was like, man, yeah. that's, uh, uh, thank you. You know, that was <laughs> nice of you to do that. You know, occasionally you bring that guy cookies or something. Right. Something yeah. Like so it was, uh, but, but, you know, it just doesn't seem like there's any civility left. Uh, you know, nobody, nobody there's is, not. Uh, you know, even in urban areas, like maybe you have a, a garage door, like a, like a metal garage door. And it's like, you know, with the asphalt in front of it, like, and so, but you're really upset with the the owner of the lot, uh, or maybe the lot owner is upset with you for having that garage, or maybe you didn't pay the rent on your unit or something. And so I'm the owner of the lot. I'm going to build a cyclone fence directly in front of your garage door. So whatever you had in there, it's never coming it's out. It's never, never coming Unless out. Unless you want to carry it over the cyclone <laughs> fence I've put directly in front of that garage door yeah it's it's uh and all it would just take is a little small conversation you know most of these things i would think could be could be ironed out because i think a lot of this just stems from a misunderstanding of you know like the the poor the poor guy that had to take down his kid's tree house yeah that was an h that was an hoa issue where somebody complained that you know, in the back of they had like this. Oh, wait a minute! Too door. much joy in our neighborhood. Right. Too much childish laughter and and joy and and celebration. Uh, yeah, we can't we can't have that in our neighborhood. So that treehouse that my son and I laboriously constructed, that he loved so much, spent time with his little friends. No, because you don't like it, I've got to take it down. Right. And uh, my my apologies that the 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 joy of childish laughter is uh, upsetting your day yeah it's 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 a shame really especially because i think that was during covid and the kid had nowhere to go so i was like really you can't even (laughs) we can't make an exception for uh for 12 months so the little johnny can play outside not be stuck in the house all day i see here um there's a an apartment and um you uh live downstairs and you want to put a a ceiling fan (laughs) oh yeah Onto your ceiling, and boy, you want to make sure you want to make sure it's anchored really, really well in your ceiling. So you're going to use like, oh, I don't know, like 
six inch bolts to put the thing into the ceiling and she go ring 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 and you put the bolts you put up 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 into the ceiling and we're looking at this picture of a beautiful hardwood floor with four bolt tips popping right up through, through it. yeah which i mean that's kind of crazy because that's not even how you mount a ceiling fan you're, you're supposed to mount that into the electrical box so God only knows what the heck they were mounting on the ceiling that they had, you know, wood screws that. Well, maybe long. it was a maybe, maybe it was a ceiling of the bedroom. And Jeff, I know you're you're much like me. Your trapeze is always pretty well anchored in your bedroom. Yeah. Um, now that you're mentioning yeah. that, yeah, you do really uh, have to anchor that that little. You got to make sure your bedroom trapeze. And I'm not saying what the trapeze is for, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just saying that exercise. should you have a trapeze in your bedroom, exercise exactly. for exercise. You're going to want to make sure it's very well anchored in the ceiling. You're going to need to use uh, six inch lag bolts directly into the into the ceiling and uh, through the floor of your upstairs neighbor if you are in an apartment building. I will say, just, uh, I can never get enough of the YouTube videos of the people on those those dancer poles that they're oh, spinning God. around. They come ripping out of the thing. They go flying across the room. I mean, it's just there's endless videos of people on these poles, man, um, man. which I still don't get. Like, why, why a pole in your house? I actually knew somebody that had a pole in their house. I'm like, what? What's going yeah. on here on the weekends? A stripper pole. A stripper pole. Oh, so you just went over there for like a, a Tupperware party? It was like or a like cocktail a... party, yeah. And then there's <laughs> like a... there's a stripper pole what? in the living room. What? Wow. What's with this pole? And it had something to do with exercise. So I, you know, wow. I, can you do core exercises on one of these poles? I suppose you could. I think you can do any kind of exercise, including the exercise that uh. That keeps a marriage alive, Jeffrey. Well, it must be because I that, that was uh that was a first. I've only seen it in one house. But uh well, well maybe we'll finish up here with um uh uh one where it looks like um someone loves their flowers, they love their gardening, um, so much so that um they have completely obliterated the sidewalk in front of the house. Oh, I saw that. That was wasn't that like a giant bush or something that had it overtaken? It looks like a rose bush, and it looks like like a big, thorny, impossible rose bush. So you you take your life in your hands if you try to push your way through this damn thing. Yeah, that's uh, that was kind of crazy. I, I thought I mean, you the were... flowers are beautiful. The flowers are really pretty. Yeah, so you have to take a small detour through the street. Into you know, the street, small and, price yeah. for beauty. Small, <laughs> small, small <laughs> price for beauty, my friend. I thought you were going to end with because. Uh, uh, I had a laugh because, uh, uh, you know, we, we always joke about the uh, missing cat thing. Another missing no. cat this week. Oh, and on no. that that list of photos, uh, some did you see the one where the guy it was like wintertime and he, the cat kept coming over to his house. So we built a little cat house and then. Oh, the, yeah. The cat yeah. Didn't yeah. Leave, so the guy thought his cat was missing, oh. but it was just a sheltering in place in, in this nice, warm, cozy little cat house that the neighbor built. So if you if you're the kind of neighbor that makes a home that's more comfortable for your neighbor's dog or cat, they cannot expect to get that animal back. No matter no matter what. If you if you're showing more love to your neighbor's cat than they have, then you deserve to lose the animal. I think the animal gets to make its own choices. I and, think so. And it's like children. I mean, if you're <laughs> right. if your children are having a better time in your neighbor's house, the peanut butter cookies are chewier. Right. Uh, uh, the college uh, education's already paid for by your neighbor. They, then you let them stay there. No, no spinach, cheeseburger, and fries every night for dinner. You know. That's uh, right. Uh, you know, people are going to make a choice. The I, kids are going to make a choice. You're going to lose your children, and that's on you. Right. I I think the moral of today's episode, Darren, is let's yeah. all try and love and get along. I mean, if, let's just try I, to get along. I, I just uh, just a little bit of compassion, a little bit of open dialogue would probably right. diffuse. Well, ninety what ninety percent of the craziness that goes on. Maybe I don't know. Seven percent. We're not going to we're not going to name a number. But ladies and gentlemen, the message from today's right next door podcast. Let's all just try to get along. Let's get along. And and what? why not do hug, hug a neighbor week? Just go hug out randomly week. like somebody neighbor walking there. Just go outside, run, rush out of your house, give them a That's hug, right. and run back in the house, see what happens. Sponsored by the Right Next Door Podcast. You have a neighbor who's driving you crazy. Tell us about it. Right Next Door Podcast at gmail.com. 
The Right Next Door podcast is an unscripted production of Eversharp Media, which takes a satirical look at local news coverage and social media. The material, views, and opinions expressed are not necessarily those of the talent, guests, or the production company. Celebrity voices impersonated, including this one.